Hey Troops, we're with Bob Wilson once again. Today we're going to talk about his 1940 Packard. He will uh, tell us all about it, I'm sure. Um, morning, Bob. Good morning, man. How are you doing? Everything all right? I'm good so far. Okay, so but there's this... a lot of day to go. I may not make it through the whole day. <laughs> Don't want to get too optimistic. Okay, this is your 1940 Packard. You want to tell us a little bit about the car, the features, how Packard was doing at that particular time of the of their existence? Sure. This is probably just before Packard uh, made a fateful decision to gain market share, and uh, they started to. Uh, make some cars that were lower priced, a 120 example. This happens to be a Packard 180, it's the 18th series. Packard didn't talk so much about the year, but talked rather about series. And the 1940 uh, Packard, this one in particular, okay. was declared the uh, fastest production car from 1940. Really? It's got, yeah, it's got 356 cubic inches uh, and it's 160 horsepower. Now for us, that doesn't sound like much, but, back, but then, back then that was, and it's got a lot of torque to it, that part I don't remember, but it's a straight eight. Want to show and, us uh, the, underneath just, the bonnet? Sure, sure. Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh yeah, just, just a little I'm, nostalgia. I'm digging the bell, digging the, the bell. Now, if you can see this, I'm not sure you can, but this was sold originally in Fort Worth on November 4th in 1939. So this Packard has been uh, uh, out here in California for most of its life. But anyway, that's that's what they And did. that's 300 and... 356 cubic inches. And 160 horsepower. horsepower. Yeah. Nice. And very quiet, very quiet. But in any event, some of the things that people know, no, it's all right. I did it's it right. again. But if you like a, a different sound. <laughs> some of the old service stations. Yes. <laughs> this is cool. People talk to me about uh, the difference in the carpeting, and they wonder why I put shag carpeting in the back. Well, I didn't. It's called moss tread. It's wool. That's the way it came. And because I'm not really that smart, I don't know a lot of stuff about cars, I carry a book. And if it's written in a book, it's got to be true, right? And because I don't know the answers to everything, the book does. This is the interior of a car just like this. This happens to be an 1807 formal sedan. And the main difference is that it's longer wheelbase. But that is the moss tread wool carpet. And up front, they make a kind of a cheesy carpet because, after all, only the driver gets in the front part. C.W. Moss. Do you know who that was? I do. <laughs> Earl C. Anthony was on, you know, talking about names, C.W. or e. Earl C. Anthony was the uh, biggest uh, Packard dealer on the West Coast. So. And he was, what town was he in? He was in Los Angeles. The biggest Packard dealer on the West Coast. Yep. And what he did is he made them come up with a different hood ornament because he thought it was too dangerous. And there's the hood ornament that Earl C. Anthony had. Is Cal this the one we were talking about before the... the they, well, when you take a picture of the one up there, you'll see the difference. See okay. this? The disc? It's gone. Oh, okay. So that's what he wanted for his customers. Anyway, that's... Okay. I don't have all of the answers, Craig. Well, you, you certainly have a super, super clean car here. This is very nice. Uh, now, let's say that I were a well-to-do uh, doctor, dentist, yep. lawyer, whatever, and I'm making 40, 50,000 in 1940, yep. Yep. and I'm gonna go get a luxury car. Right. Why would I buy a Packard over, say, a Piercero, a Cadillac, a Lincoln? Because the quality uh, was, there were the three P's up until about 1940. It was Peerless, Pierce Arrow, and Packard. Cadillac and Lincoln, they were not, uh, they were not big players back in those days. Really? These had, these were coach built. Many of them back in the 20s and 30s were coach built. Wow. So Rolston and, and a number of other builders, so they got a name for quality. But like I mentioned earlier, in 1940, they decided they wanted to introduce some more cars, and it diluted the brand. That's, but in that's, 1940, you would have done it again, mainly based on its, on its reputation. Nice. Okay, so again, uh, some of the, the features of the car, like I remember you telling me there's something for the oh. ladies in the back. Ah, uh, yes. This is really cool. There's no quarter window. As you can see, there's no quarter window there. Right. And usually that's where they would have a little uh, roll down window or, but now, if you look in the back corner there, okay. that little door opens, there's a mirror, and I'm gonna duck in front of you. Go ahead. 
And the dealers would provide a perfume bottle for each of the ladies. And there's one on each side. And this and comes with the car. This comes with the car. Ah. Dealers would do these little perks. And it was just, again, one of those things that talk, talk to getting the brand. This would be a feature that Peerless or Pierce did not have, correct? I think others tried copying it, but they were they were different. Sometimes it was in the seat back uh -huh. where you would have the ropes and, and that. And actually, some had bars in them, like, uh, Pier, uh, like the... Uh, Pierce Arrow and some of these others, and Cadillac later on, they would actually have bars that where you fold it out of the seat. Uh -huh. So, so you would jump in this car and drive it to Vegas as we speak, correct? I would because this car it is it does have what they call the Econo Drive back in those days, which you and I call this overdrive. Oh, it's got an overdrive in it. It has overdrive. So when <laughs> I, there's a little there's a little jewel on. Oh, the, I can uh, hardly wait dash. for this. This little jewel right here on this rheostat, it glows red when it's ready to go into overdrive. So you simply lift the gas like you would with any overdrive, and it uh, then it goes off and you can shift and you're ready to go. Isn't that amazing? And it goes into like a, a, an overdrive. <laughs> right, and I can drive uh, 70 miles an hour all day with this thing. Probably around 2100, 2200 RPM. Yeah, right. it's very low. I'm not beating it up, and I don't want to beat it up. Yeah, well, yeah. But I drive it to uh, I drive to Palm Springs to the shows out there. I drive it to Huntington Beach and up to San Marino. Really? Yeah. So it it's just it's a streetable car, and it's very nice, and it's like taking a trip in your Barca lounger. <laughs> <laughs> now I imagine when you're driving this, you get a lot of oohs and ahs, huh? I get a lot of thumbs up and a lot of smiles, and that's really. And I mean this sincerely. The reason I get the cars is I look for something that's not seen very often and it will make somebody smile. And these cars the make it, people smile. Uh, I'm telling you, that, isn't that wonderful? Yes, you know, it is wonderful, uh, but it's not so wonderful that we have run over on time. We do apologize for that. So uh, we're going to close with this clip of Bob Wilson driving his Ford powered 1937 Plymouth down the drag strip at Auto Club Dragway in Fontana. Yes, he is also a drag racer. Hey, thanks for joining us. We'll be back next week with another one of Bob's cars. We gotta go. Yeah, baby. It doesn't get much better than that. Don't think that it does. I gotta go. <laughs> Sit up straight, enunciate properly, and use the proper vernacular. God, I love that word. Take a recording and shove it where the sun doesn't shine. Bubba baby. Hey, Crazy Craig from the studio. After the banquet, I lost my voice. I don't know what happened. Lucky you. Ha ha! Ha ha!